I do have a serious question for all of you, though. Whenever Blue Origin does successfully land a booster, I believe it'll happen eventually. Um, how long do you think it'll actually take for them to turn around and reuse that booster, relaunch that booster for the first time? Because correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't it take SpaceX about a year to refly their first booster? So the question for everybody here and for the chat room, too, how long do you think it's going to actually take for them to turn around their first uh, reflight like that? They won't. 70, I, I don't think they 70, will. 72 weeks. 72 no, no, weeks. I, my, my theory is uh, the first one that they get back, they're going to do forensic analysis on to understand what reentry did to it. That forensic analysis is going to make it a non-flyable object. Uh, That's my theory. I don't actually know, but yeah. I think they're going to have to, they're going to dig into the tank. They're going to see how much of the walls got, you know, battered and, and are like, did we get micro cracking and things like that? And by the time they do that type of forensics, you, you can't repair the vehicle. It's no longer, it's no longer a worthy pressure vessel. So mm. I don't think the first one, uh, in my theory, my theory is the first one does not re refly. Having said that, wouldn't you be able to you know, do that they with do whatever they want? Wouldn't you be able to do that with NDE, like x-rays and stuff like that? Like inspection? Mm, to a point, it's really hard to NDE, like some of the COPV, if, if they've got, I assume they have COPVs. It's really hard to do NDE and get really a lot of the micro, micro yeah, cracks. Co like, kind of, you got to kind of cut them in half. COPVs are, are internal to the vehicle. I don't see how reentry would affect them in any yeah, way. But, but you'll do the same. Generally speaking, I expect them, I expect them to do the same thing to most parts of the vehicle. <laughs> I expect they're going to be drilling holes in a good chunk of the vehicle. I don't think they're going to NDE test it. I think they're going to D. E, test it. <laughs> the e, we, skip the N. <laughs> yeah. Only so but, much but, hey, can be done. Hang on, hang on. You, you, Daddy, you might be right, right? Like, like, non yeah, so you've, got, e for, you've got x ray and ultrasound. There's a lot of ways yeah, that you, there's, there, there's a lot of things that you can do. And yes, there are limits to it, to the Eka's point, but like, there's a lot of things, a lot of systems that would not be affected by return to Earth. So all sure. you need to do it, is make sure that the 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 structure is okay, and anything else that would that is in that chain that would be, uh, you know, exposed to damage from heat or what and whatnot, you can easily replace engines and connectors and wiring harnesses and all that. So interesting. The, the note is so first for those who don't know, NDE is basically non destructive testing, right? It's it's your ability to go in and um, make sure that whatever part you've got. Um, you, you test it and make sure that it's, it's ready for flight uh, without destroying it, without having to cut it in half. But notice I said part and not overall entire vehicle. Generally yeah. speaking, you NDE test individual components before you integrate them into the final vehicle. Once you've got your COPVs and whatnot, and then you, you, you know, stir weld everything together, it is, it's not like you can just go in and take these things out, generally speaking. Again, I don't know New Glenn. Right. So yes. maybe New Glenn, you can totally go in and do this and it and it's not a problem. But I would be very NDT, surprised. I miss I misspoke. Thank you. They have to do uh, it. Like, like, NDE, we call it NDE. Uh it's not non destructive engineering, non destructive oh yeah, testing. I, I, yeah, I, I yeah, we call it NDE. I'm seeing but a, like uh, you you can take a you can take a, a playbook page out of the airline industry where you 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 do NDT on airframes and stuff you don't you're not destroying an airplane when you do go for a major inspection yeah you may just, disassemble some but there's you're not like destroying the airframe airframe to find cracks and they do find cracks the, and they they do repair them maybe I think some of their first vehicles that actually do destructive testing right like you look at you look at um, like Boeing or an Airbus, and they do the wing testing. They 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 go in. They're like, all right, let's, not, let's break not the a, wing. Not, not to a flyable aircraft. There's that that mule is made specifically for that. That's fair. Again, I don't know. I do not know what New Glenn is going. What they're going to do with New Glenn. My note is, I don't think they're going to ever fly it again. I think they're going to do destructive testing on it. I think it's just going to be faster, cheaper, and easier for them to do that. Let's find out. Right? I like, think, uh, let's you, see you which might one's be... correct. 